Well, ladies and gentlemen, meet Kong. She's pretty dirty. This is my new trailer for hauling our side-by-sides. It is pretty nice. It's finished out on the interior. It's a 24 foot by eight foot wide with seven foot ceilings. I'm gonna be doing several things to this trailer to upgrade it. Probably gonna add some more lighting. Uh, we've got the escape door right there, side door with the step down, uh, and it's pre-wired. Now it doesn't have everything it needs for electrical, but it's pre-wired, so that's pretty awesome. It's got the back wing. I'll get some better video and photos of it when we're not here at the house. But uh, really happy with it. Something I've been wanting to get for a while. Was having a really hard time not only finding one, but getting one that wasn't outrageously priced, but, but was good quality. There's so many out there that are junk. I mean, just really poorly built. And they want a fortune for them. So the first upgrade I'm making to the trailer is I want to put uh, epoxy garage flooring down in it. And I've watched a few videos, several videos actually, of other people doing this. And one thing's I noticed at the end of everybody's video, they would always uh, talk about how it turned out. And they would talk about how if you got up close, you could see the seams and the boards, uh, the screw holes, things like that. But with the flakes, Standing back, it really disguised it. I thought, because I hadn't seen anybody else do it, I'm sure I'm not the first, but I just didn't see any videos on it. I thought, why don't, what if I floated the seams out and floated the screw heads hole so it's a little bit more flat? Now, granted, this wood is not perfectly flat, it's not going to be perfect, but I thought it might help disguise at least being able to see the screw holes and the seams. Uh, so I've just floated it out with some wood putty and I'm going to let this harden and dry really good and then I'm going to sand it and then uh, we'll get started on it. I'll talk later about why I selected this track system, but for now we're working on the flooring. I wanted to add this trailer came with the floor already painted. Again, this is considered a finished out uh, enclosed trailer. Uh, in fact, it's pre-wired and uh, pre-wired for um, AC in it, which I would like to add to it at some point. But the floor was pre-painted. I did not lay down primer or paint, but I would definitely recommend that before starting with the garage floor process. Everything I've seen and read um, indicates you definitely want to prime that wood, get it coated with a sealant before you start the process with the garage floor. I'm going with the Rust-Oleum system. Um, I'll go over that when I get to that process, part of the process, but uh, you don't want to apply it to the raw wood. Okay, update. Here's where we're at. <clears throat> I've used some uh, putty to uh, fill in most of the seams. I started running out of putty, so I had to give up on that one when I get there with the sander. I'm hoping I can just smooth it out enough that the uh, paint or epoxy substance will fill that in. But uh, got all the screw holes filled in, most of the seams. Now I'm uh, sanding it. <clears throat> I am wearing a respirator mask, uh, but I'm sanding it with a little orbital hand sander. Gonna try to smooth all this putty down. I'm also going ahead and scuffing up this paint that came on the trailer. I'm not sure exactly what substance it is or whatever, but I feel like I need to uh, scuff that up a little bit. So I'm using the hand sander to just scuff that a little bit to make sure that my application sticks really well. The plan is to put down the gray garage flooring, which I'll show you here in a little bit, and flakes. And then I bought a kit of clear to come back over that and put a clear coat over that. And I think it's gonna look really nice. I bought some grit sand to mix in with the clear so that we can get some good traction on that. After I'm finished sanding, I'm gonna blow this out with a leaf blower really well and get to painting.
Okay, I've got my uh, D-rings removed. I wasn't sure if I was gonna remove those or not because when they painted the floor, they got a little bit of paint on them. But I did decide I wanna go and remove them so that way I can get this nice and uniform all the way up against the D-rings without having to worry about it getting on the D-rings. I can probably remove that paint that's on the D-rings that they got on there. I've got <clears throat> a paintbrush ready to go just in case I need to do some cutting in. I'm sure when I get down here to the step, I'm gonna need it down there. <clears throat> I taped everything off, so I really shouldn't need to do much cutting in. Um, when they painted the floor, they got a little bit of this gray paint on, on the very edges of the molding at the bottom. So I really <clears throat> didn't worry about taking that off or anything, I just taped it up and if a little bit of this floor covering gets on there, it's not really gonna matter. I can probably remove it, but even if I don't, there's already a little bit of paint on them. Um, I've got my paint flakes ready to go. I bought extra. This is a 40 pound bag that I bought off Amazon that matches the Rust-Oleum. It's not made by Rust-Oleum, but it matches the Rust-Oleum pattern. And I added the two small bags of Rust-Oleum paint chips that came with it. Probably way more than I need. I didn't want to come up short because I do want to put it on heavy. I've seen guys do it really light and I've seen people do it really heavy and I really like the look of the heavy and that's really why I want to put the clear on top of this because I want to put the paint chips down pretty heavy. Uh, when you do that, you kind of have to scrape them when this dries a little bit to, to break off those chips so that they're not sticking up. Um, and then you put the clear on top of it. But been getting ready for this step. Uh, I thought that you had to mix this stuff for 15, 20 minutes. I've seen guys on their YouTube videos saying that the instructions say to mix it for like 20 minutes, then bust the packet and mix it another 20 or 30 minutes. That is not at all what the instructions say. The instructions say to mix it up thoroughly before you break the seal. And then after you break the seal, you're supposed to mix it for another two to three minutes. So I have mixed it probably for about five minutes without breaking the seal. And uh, so I feel like I've followed the instructions on that. And then we're gonna, it says to roll part A, you put it on the floor, start rolling part A into part B, and it'll break this seal, making it one big pouch or packet. You mix it again for another two to three minutes, then you start applying. Uh, I have a box, I need to go get it, that I set up. It's actually the box that came in. I'm gonna leave the other bag or pouch in there unopened to to create, take up some space in there so that this bag will stay standing up in the box and I don't have to worry about it falling over. So we're supposed to roll A into B. Here we go. There it goes. This seems like it ought to be mixing it pretty well. Probably rotate it, get it from one end to the other says to mix it for two to three minutes so that's all they're expecting it must mix together fairly easy because that is not a long time seems like some guys are really overthinking it saying they have to mix it for 30 minutes Everyone says the higher you throw it, the better it's going to spread. I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting it up close to the wall. There we go. We're getting better. Let's get 
getting close to what I was looking for. All right, day two, let's take a look. I ran out of battery yesterday, so I didn't get to film the complete application of this. So um, it looks really good. I finished out what you guys saw earlier. I'm hoping I don't regret not pulling up the masking tape right away. I think I'll be okay, but uh, Hopefully I don't have to spend a lot of time working to get that off where the application hit it. But looks great. Um, I think if I had to do this part over again, because I like it so heavy, I would just really completely cover the floor and then just remove the, the loose flakes afterwards. Because there are a few places where, if you kind of look close enough, you can kind of tell right there, it's a little bit thinner than the rest. Overall, I think I did a pretty good job at uh, broadcasting the flakes. To be honest with you, I really am happy the way it looks right now. Um, I'm really happy with the texture. The grip is really nice. But I am going to go ahead and apply the clear coat. There is warnings on there about it making it slippery when wet. So I'm going to add the <clears throat> slip.
slip resistant granules um, to try to improve traction. But I'm really happy with it so far. I think once the masking tape's up, this is going to look really nice. Um, wasn't near the job I thought it was going to be. It did take me um, probably a good 45 minutes to an hour to do this by myself. Uh, I bought the two and a half car garage kit. This is a 24 foot trailer. I bought the two and a half car garage kit, which comes with two packets of, uh, of mixture. And I literally used the last drop on the door. And so now I'm actually contemplating, okay, do I break open that other bag valued at about $150, $170 just to do this step and the flip over transition ramp or I'm considering using black bed liner and painting that on both sides with black bed liner and this step. What would you guys do? I don't know. I just, I kind of feel like this being black would actually look really nice. A, real, a nice contrast right here. And I'm kind of feeling the same way about that. My son thinks I should just go ahead and break the packet open and use it because I'm probably never ever going to use it on anything else, which he's probably right. But um, it's not just not wanting to use the package. I, I kind of feel like that black contrast would look good. Anyway, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to have to still think about it. Getting ready to do the clear top coat, and uh, I'll film that application as well, and then we'll take a look see what it looks like afterwards. Uh, I'll probably be trying to pull this tape off as I'm putting down the clear so that I'm not adding another layer of something that's gonna make it difficult to pull it off. Anyway, it's looking great. Real happy so far. So this morning, what I did was I came in and used a squeegee and tried to break off all of the hanging paint uh, chips to try to kind of smooth the floor out a little bit best I could so that I didn't have any that were really at an angle. Uh, blew it out with a leaf blower really well. Uh, ran the squeegee again. Ran, it, ran the leaf blower two more times to try to get out as many of the loose chips as I could. So that's where we are now. The instructions say that if you're applying this clear to heavy flake that uh, not only do you not need to scuff it up or anything as long as it's within seven days, but it says that uh, it's best to just go ahead and put it in the tray and apply it from there. It, it doesn't give real good instructions on how to add the granular uh, <clears throat> for texture, for grip. Uh, and I've seen lots of people talk about this on online that they don't give good instructions. I've seen some people put down the clear and then sprinkle the granulars and run it with a roller again. I've seen people add it, try to add it to the bag, which I think is not a great idea because you can't, after you open it, you can't really mix it really well. I think what I'm gonna do is pour some in the tray, sprinkle in some of the, the granulars, and then just try to mix it with my roller uh, best I can. Doesn't seem like it's really important how you do it, or else, because uh, several different ways have been working for people, and they don't really specify an instruction, so it must not be that big a deal so I thought I'd take a minute or so uh, here at the end of the video just kind of talk about some learnings and speaking of learnings you know YouTube is a great resource uh, for learning things I know I did my research before uh, I started this project uh, but if you got anything out of this video um, if you don't mind subscribing to the channel just to show your appreciation uh, hit the like button and even drop a comment down below and in the comments I'd really love to know what you guys think about what I did or what I should have done different uh, but also any ideas for upgrades you think I should do. I've already talked about lighting and electrical and AC and some of the things that I'm going to do. But if you have ideas for things that uh, you think would be great for this UTV trailer that we may at sometimes even use to camp in, uh, please let me know. I uh, would love to see that. But I definitely will be posting more videos as my upgrades go. So please subscribe to follow those upgrades. Uh, and again, hit the like button and uh, leave a comment. Uh, if I had to do it all over again, I'm very, very happy with how this turned out. Very happy that I did the clear coat or the clear topping on it. Um, 
I would probably get a helper if I was going to do it again. I was right at the 45 minute time limit on the product. Uh, and although it can be done with one person and I did it, if I'd had a helper, uh, we wouldn't have even come close to that 45 minute window. So I'd probably do that the next time I'd make sure I well lit that trailer, especially when I'm applying the clear, I could not see at all where the clear was going down. And I really got lucky that I coated it and spread it pretty well. There are a couple of spots. If I look really close, um, getting low down to the floor and put a glare on it, I can see where I missed a couple of spots, but no one else notices it. So just because I know it's there, I may come back later and um, patch that up. But but honestly, it looks good. And it looked great before I even put the clear down there. But man, the clear really makes it pop. Uh, really happy that I did that. And again, I didn't mention in the video, uh, but you're not supposed to let any of this product dry in direct sunlight. So when I did that back door, uh, I flipped it up, put a spacer in there so that it wouldn't close all the way, but got it out of the sunlight. What I ended up doing on the sidestep and the back transition ramp I have some uh, a really oily based uh, black paint that I use for touching up on my trailers. I painted those with that black paint and then I used the paint chips to sprinkle on there uh, to make it look very similar to the garage flooring on the trailer deck. But I like that it's got a black background to it. It really makes that step area pop. Uh, and it also uh, does the same for the transition ramp. So I'll show that in the next video. Unfortunately, I was not able to get good video of that when I was done. I had to get the trailer back to storage because my HOA is very picky about stuff like this being in the neighborhood and I didn't want to get a notice or even worse, a fine. So had to get it back to storage and didn't have time to get some video, but I definitely will post a video of the final product in the future videos. Uh, next up is going to be track system. Uh, I'll talk about uh, the track system that I selected and why and how I put it down and the things that I did to make sure that it serves its purpose for me and is very secure. Uh, anyway, again, drop ideas for upgrades down in the comments and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.